Okay, so I've got this question. I'm going to start with a hard one though. It's x squared in brackets raised to the power of n minus 1 times x cubed times y all raised to the power of minus 2n times x squared. This is all over. All over x, y raised to the power of minus 3n times y to the power of minus n. Okay? It looks scary, but all you have to do is use the laws of exponents together with the definition to do the question. Okay? So here, the first thing that you have to do is to remove the brackets first. Okay? You remove the brackets. Before you do anything, you remove the brackets using law 3, law 4, probably law 5, but here is law 3 and 4. Okay? So, first step we will say, for the first part, we have got x squared inside the bracket. Then the exponent is a binomial. It's n minus 1. So, the 2 inside the bracket multiplies both the n and the minus 1. So that you get x to the power of 2n minus 2. Okay? Times... Again, here, the x cubed is affected by the minus 2 power of n, which is an exponent, and the y is also affected by the exponent, which is minus 2 power, so it is minus 2n. So I can write that as x, 3 times minus 2n, so I'm multiplying this 3 by that minus 2. So I'll get minus 6n. Okay? Then the exponent of the y, it's a 1. 1 times minus 2n, I'll get y to the power of minus 2n. Then times x squared. All over. The denominator, there's one bracket, so I can remove that. And I'll get x to the power of minus 3n times y to the power of minus 3n times y to the power of minus n. Okay, so I remove brackets, okay, using law 3 and law 4. Once you get to this point here, the next thing is to use law 1 and law 2. Or you can combine both. Okay, so my suggestion is, for this question here, I'm just going to combine law 1 and 2. Okay, yes. Are you talking about here? Okay. It's already it's already multiplied. The x cubed is multiplying one. But because of the exponent outside the bracket, this one here. This exponent, it's affecting both the x cubed and the y. So we have to remove the bracket by using law number three. I hope you have been going over your laws of exponent. I hope you did. I hope you did. This subject requires me to be, what can I say? Maybe I'll use the word consistent. Okay? Don't skip a little part of my answer. Yes? Sir, I'm 
I just want to remind everyone that the laws of exponents, right? The laws of exponents, so far here, I used law number three. A, B, all raised to the power of N is equal to A to the power of N times B to the power of N. It's the same thing. If I put the address, I, I hope, listen, I hope you are all aware that the dot represents multiplication. Yeah, your grade 9 teacher was supposed to, to have told you. Okay? So even if I don't put the dot here, it still means there is multiplication. Either I can put it or I don't put it in. There is multiplication. If there is no other operator, that is addition, subtraction, or division, means there is multiplication. Okay? All right. So, is it better now? Okay. So, here I've used that law. That is law 3. Okay. When you're using law 3, be aware that the A is a, is a distinct base. From B. There are two distinct bases. Okay? So when you write on the right hand side, you have to split them up. But all must have the same exponent. That's what I did. So I'm going to combine law 1 and 2 now. If I combine law 1 and 2, we end up getting this. I've got two unknown variables here. That is, in terms of bases, I've got x and I've got y. So if I write x, I can write this as x to the power of 2n minus 2. Then here the exponent is minus 6n. So if I add that minus 6n, it becomes minus 6n. I'm not doing this mentally. Sorry. I'm doing this mentally rather. Then, then we have got this x squared. So that will be plus 2. Remember, if the, if the base is the same, you add the what? The exponent. So that's what I'm doing here. The base is the same for x to the power of 2n minus 2, x to the power of minus n, and x squared. So I added their exponent. Using law 1. Okay? Using law 1. Then, I also have an x in the denominator. So I have to use law what? Law 2. You subtract the what? Exponent. But the exponent is a negative exponent. So you have to be very careful there. Since it's a negative exponent, I'll say minus, open bracket, minus 3n. It's a negative exponent. So I have to take into account that it's a negative exponent by putting it inside brackets. Okay? Then for y, I've got, in the numerator, I've got y to the power of minus 2n, right? And then I've got this y to the power of minus 3n in the denominator. Since it's part of the denominator, means I've used law 2, so I'll subtract the exponents. 
So that will be minus open bracket, minus 3n, close bracket. Then I also have this y to the power of minus n. It's part of the denominator, so I have to subtract exponent, so it will be minus open bracket, minus n. I'm using law number two. Law number two, x to the power of m divided by x to the power of n to power two. If you are mouth, if you are dividing two bases that are the same, you are dividing, you subtract the what? The exponents. Right? Another way would be to add these two, that is the minus 3n and the minus n, and you get minus 4n. That's another way. Yes? Okay, we are going to multiply in the next step. We are going to simplify first the exponents for each. The exponent for x and the exponent for y, we are going to simplify them. Then we multiply those results to get a final answer, which is simplified. So I'm using law 1 and 2 now. We are well. If you are dividing basis, you subtract the exponent. If you are multiplying basis, you will add the what? Exponent. Do you remember that from last week? Yes. So, it's only that this is a little bit long though from what you are used to, but the concept of dividing bases that are the same and subtracting the exponent, multiplying the bases and adding the exponent is the same concept. It hasn't changed. Okay, so here I'm going to simplify. So when I simplify, make sure you pay attention because your knowledge of integers is required here. So 2n, I've got this 2n, I've got that minus 6n. This minus 3n, because of this minus outside the bracket, will become a plus 3n. So I have 2n minus 6n, which is minus 4n. Can you pay attention? Okay, so 2n minus 6n gives me minus 4n. Plus the 3n that I will get from here. From here, I'll get a positive 3n. So minus 4n plus 3n will give me negative n. So I'll end up having x to the power of negative n. Which three and which one? Are you talking about this one? Yeah. Huh? I think I think the denominator is not minus or y maybe three. I think it's negative three. Okay. Look here. Right. Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? I, I hope you guys will paint a little bit. <laughs> Alright. Do you see this? The exponent is minus 3n. Do you all see that? Yes. Yeah, then I use I use definition. So law number three. I have x, I have y here. So if I use law number three, I'll end up having x to the power of minus 3n times y to the power of minus 3a. Using law number 3. Are you following? Okay. So then this y to the power of minus n, it's on its own. So it remains as it is here. Okay? Then, but we've got another question. 
Okay. Then, from this step, I combined law one and law two. If you are multiplying bases, you add the exponents. If you are dividing similar bases, you subtract the exponent. So from here to this step, I combine law one and two. Okay, then I need to simplify, right? That's what I'm doing now. I'll call two together there. Yes. So, just to repeat what I just did to get the x to the power of minus n, right? Make sure you look and listen. 2n minus 6n gives, you, gives us what? Minus 4n. Then, here we have got a minus 3n inside brackets and a minus outside the brackets. So, the minus outside and the minus inside will give you a what? A positive, 3n. So, you end up with minus 4n plus 3n, you get minus n. Is it making sense? Then, I'm not done now. I need to deal with the integers. So I have minus 2 plus 2. Fortunately, those two will cancel out. So this, my, this plus 2 and that minus 2 are going to cancel out. Because they are opposite. Okay? Which means I won't have any integer as part of the exponent. I'll only have x to the power of minus x. Okay? So I'm done with x. Let's move on to y. So when it comes to y, okay, when it comes to y, I have minus 2n. There is a minus here outside the bracket and a minus 3n inside. So that will give me a positive n. Minus 2n plus 3n gives me a positive n. Then n minus, minus n will give me 2n. Remember, I did integers in grade 8 or 9. Remember that. Don't forget that I did integers. Because I taught grade 9 too. I did integers. Okay? Adding and subtracting integers. So that's what they have got. So I'll end up getting it's minus 2n plus 3n, which gives you n. Minus minus n, you get 2n. So you end up having y to the power of 2n. Okay? Now, always, when you are simplifying these exponential expressions, you must convert negative exponents to positive exponents. So, I need to, to convert this x to the power of minus n to a positive exponent using definition number 2. So, I can say this is equal to 1 over x to the power of n times y to the power of 2n. So my final answer will be y to the power of 2n all over x to the power of n. That will be your final answer. Okay. We can't... I, 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 I don't want to end up Taking out the y as a common factor, I'll stop there. Any question? Okay, if you don't have a question, then let's do another one. Right, this time I'm going to do one way you have to convert basis to prime basis. So, number 8. Number 8, we have got 12 to the power of n plus 1 times 9 to the power of 2n minus 1. All over 36 to the power of n times 8 to the power of 1 minus n. Do that. Yes. Sorry? So don't you have that? <laughs> Alright. Okay. Let's carry on. 
Now, sometimes when you are simplifying exponential expressions, you need to make sure that all the bases are prime bases. So a question like this one here, you require knowledge of prime bases. You have to convert every base to a prime base. Now, there are three main common prime bases. The two, the three, and the five. Those are the three most common prime bases. Okay? So, first thing here, I'm going to convert 12. I'm going to write 12 as a product of its prime factors. Remember, you did that in grade 8 and 9. You converted numbers to products of their prime factors. You did. So, 12 is the same as 4 times 3, but the 4 is the same as 2 squared. So I can write this as 2 squared times 3, all raised to the power of n plus. Okay. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Remember, in, in grade 8 and 9, if I gave you a number like, say, 30, then ask you to write it as a product of its prime factors. Okay? What you used to do, what you draw, do like a tree, or I don't know how you call it. First, you, you determine the first prime factor. For 30, it's a 2. Then you say 2 into 15 into 30, that's 15. 2 is not a factor of 15, so you move on to the next prime factor, which is a what? A 3. 3 into 15, that's 5. Okay? 3 is not a factor of 5, so you move on to the next prime factor, which is 5. 5 into 5, you get 1. Then you say 30 is equal to 2 times 3 times 5. So, I have written 30 as a product of each prime factors. That's bad man. Okay. Times. The 9 is the same as 3 squared. Then you put the 3 squared inside brackets, and you raise that to the power of 2n minus 1. So, I've converted the 12, the 9, to its prime factors. Then, the 36, I can also write it as a product of its prime factors. Write it to be 9 times 4, which is two square, 3 squared times 2 squared. Okay? So that is the same as 3 squared times 2 squared. All raised to the power of n times. Now, 8 is the same as 2 cubed. All raised to the power of 1 minus 10. So I have converted the 12, the 9, the 36, the 8 to product of their time factors. Okay? Hmm? That's not the answer. I'm not done yet. Okay, I just converted the basis to time basis. Then I need to simplify now using law 1 and law 2. But before I do that, I have to remove those brackets that I created. So the next step would be this 2, the exponent of the 2 squared, multiplies the n, n plus 1. So you get 2 to the power of 2n plus 2. I multiply this 2 by n, the 2 by 1. And I got 2 to the power of 2n plus 2. Are you following that? Then the 3, its exponent is a 1 inside the bracket, so I'm having 3 to the power of n plus 1. Okay? I can convert this multiplication sign to a, to, to a dot, so I can put it there. Because remember, the 2 are the same. Either you need the multiplication sign or a dot. That's the same multiplication. Then 3 squared, 2 times 2n will give me 3 to the power of 4n. Okay? And 2 to the power of minus 1, that will give me minus, minus 2. Because 2 times minus 1 gives me a negative 2. All over. The denominator, I have 3 squared inside the bracket. There is n as an exponent outside. 
So I'll get 3 to the power of 2n. I have 2 squared inside brackets, and I have n outside, so it becomes 2 to the power of 2n times the 2 cubed raised to the power of 1 minus, minus n will give me 2 to the power of 3 minus 3n. Okay? Now when you get there, now use law 1 and law 2 combined. Okay? So I'm going to write the whole expression here at the bottom. So it will be 2 to the power of 2n Okay, plus 2. Now, in the numerator, we don't have another base of 2. We only have 2 to the power of 2n plus 2. But the denominator has got 2 to the power of 2n and 2 to the power of 3 minus n. So I'm going to use law number 2. If you are dividing bases, you subtract the exponent. So for this 2 to the power of 2n, it becomes minus 2n. For the 3, minus 3n becomes minus, open bracket, 3 minus 3n. It's a binomial exponent, so I have to put it inside brackets. This is a binomial exponent, so I have to put it inside the brackets. I used more 2. Okay? They are dividing bases, subtract exponents. Okay? Then, for base of 3, I'll use law 1 first. 3 to the power of n plus 1 times 3 to the power of 4n minus 2. Because they are multiplying each other, I'll add their exponents. So that will be 3 to the power of n plus 1. Okay? Plus 4n minus 2. I'm using law 1 then. There's another 3 to the power of 2n in the denominator, so I'll use law, law 2, so that will be minus 2n. Okay? Then allow me to write the final answer. Okay, let me use a different color for the final answer. So let's simplify this now. For base of 2, we have got 2n minus 2n. Those two are going to cancel out. This 2n and that minus 2n are going to cancel out. Do you agree with me on that? Yeah. Then, then I'm going to be left with this minus 3 which is inside brackets. If I take it out, because of this minus, it becomes positive. Do you agree with me then? Yeah. So we end up having 2, 2 to the power of 3n, Okay, then this 2 and the minus 3 will give me negative 1. So I have 2 to the power of 3n minus 1. Yes. Okay, which part exactly? Your homework. So, uh, 
after writing two of three and nine of one, right, we need to move on to the base of three. Okay, now if you look at it, we have got n plus 4n gives us 5n. 5n minus 2n, that will give us uh, 3n. So we end up having 3 half of 3n, okay, minus okay, 1, that is positive 1, minus 2 will give us a negative 1. So that can be our final answer. Now this answer we can simplify it further and write it. Since the exponent is the same, we can write it as 2 times 3, 4 raised to the power of 3n minus 1, which is the same as 6 times 3, will be the same as saying 6, to be the same as saying 6, raised the power of 3n minus 1. So you can read your answer like that. Alright? So that will be the end of that question.